Hello and welcome to another Budget and Legit video. Today we are talking ABS sensors and how to scope them and uh, why you would need to scope them. Again, this is our series that we are doing on the Ditex Landscope, the 200 and 35 pound four channel scope. Now what you got to remember is, especially with this particular scope, or even, not even so much with the scope, but when you're doing diagnostics, is you need a battery maintainer. Now with this scope being powered off the battery, that's the way I'm doing it because the, the lead that came with it, I haven't got the right connection yet, so I'm gonna get that sorted out. But you can power this off the, the mains. But for the minute, we're gonna be using it off the battery. So I've, of course that puts more pressure on the battery. So here is my battery maintainer. It's a 50 amp battery maintainer. I got this from Hobby Tools. Again, I'll leave the links down below. Um, it's just because if you're doing it for any period of time with the power, with, with your ignition being switched on and also the scope drawing power from this, it won't be long until it draws your battery down. Now, so why would you want to scope your ABS sensor? Well, there's a few reasons. Obviously, because it's quick and easy and it's accurate. There's loads of different types of uh, ABS sensors out there. There's ones with two pins, ones with three pins, Hall Effect, digital, analog. But we'll kind of get to that in another video. But all we need to concentrate on is you've got a two wire sensor, you've got a power and a ground, but the signal wire is superimposed in the ground wire. Now, if you've got a three wire sensor, you've got a power, ground, and a signal. So you just need to know which one you've got to which signal you're gonna get. Now, there's loads of uh, ways they do it. You know, they do it with magnet pickups, they do it with tone rings and all sorts. And there's a very simple, easy way, because with a tone ring, you can actually see, physically see if there's any cracks or, or chunks taken out of it. But when you get one with a magnet uh, style in the actual uh, wheel bearing, you can't really see. And you can get ones that look perfect and brand new, but they're actually broken. And you can get this fella, it's just a magnet um, trace card. And if I put it up to there, now, see that? You can actually see the segments of the magnet inside the ABS sensor. So you can actually see before you fit it if the segments are actually okay. You can get these free or you can actually buy, and I couldn't find mine. I've got a bigger piece of paper, a bigger one, and it's just, it's a lot easier to read. You can put it on the whole magnet in one go and it's just a lot easier to read, but I can't find it. I had to use my free one, but you get the idea. Right, so let's get up to the setup of the scope. We're using two channels. We're gonna use one for voltage and we're gonna use one for our signal so we can kind of see both of them at the same time. Let's get the actual setup of the scope first. So we got it connected to our battery and we got it connected to our computer with our LAN cable, hence the word car scope LAN. Then we've got two channels, A and B. A has to have our clamp on for the earth and B is just our normal probes. And what we've got here is we've back probed into the ABS sensor, we've got a two wire ABS sensor. So we've got our first channel into the power wire, which is pin one in this car, and our second channel into pin two, which is our ground slash signal wire. So let's go to the scope and set the scope up and let's see what we see. Right, we heard the beep. We're gonna go to connect and we're gonna set up our scope. We've got channel one up here and it's at 20 volts, that's okay. We're going to go select channel two, and again, test lead is okay for channel two, but we need to change a couple of things on channel two. So let's go to our voltage. We'll go to two volts, and we'll change it to half a second. Well, let's change it to a second time base. So we're on two volts per division, and we are at one second time base. All right, and then we go start. So what I'm going to do now, turn on the ignition. Now, did you see that? What happened there? That can be our answer for this video. What happened at the beginning? Let's just stop that. And we go back and we catch it. Now, people, what happened there? So that's our question. Answer down below, and we'll, we'll continue. So, as we can see, our blue trace, if we go up to it, is just under 10 and a half volts, 11 volts. Right, and trace two is our red trace, which is channel B, is going to be our signal wire. And there we go, as I move it by hand, we can see 
what is happening. We are getting a square wave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the car and I'm going to get some patterns going along and we're going to actually see what it looks like with the car kind of turning the wheel for me. It's going to be a lot easier. Then I will talk over, because I'm going to have to mute the car sound and talk over in the edit so you can hear what I'm saying, because this is a diesel we are testing on. Right, what I've done is I've stretched the video out because I didn't record for long enough. So this might look a bit slow coming off the scope, but that's just the way I had to do it. So as you can see, our frequency is changing on our waveform. And the reason it's changing is because our wheel is decelerating. So that's how the computer knows, uh, calculates the speed. So as you can see there, it's changing again. What I've done is the car is in first gear. And I'm just slowing down that wheel just to change the frequency of it. I think in a second now I let it go and uh, I actually touched the probe there so don't worry about that. I let it go and we can see the frequency changes again if memory serves. Wheel is slowing down even more and I think I let it go soon and there we go boom. I let the wheel go and it's speeding up and we can see the frequency is completely different. So that's how the computer calculates the speed. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into how it actually works and how the computer recognizes that signal and what does the ABS sensor actually do. Um, but now I want to show what comes up now. I slow the wheel down so the frequency is changing but just before I turn the car off Boom, what is that? Answers down below. Now in modern cars, don't forget, the ABS sensor does more than just doing the ABS. It can also do traction control, cruise control, electronic stability control. It can do a lot. So when you have an ABS issue, you might have other lights coming on in your dash, you know, your traction control light, your cruise control light. So, you know, they can uh, do more than one system. So it's handy to know you know what to look for and you could literally fix two or three problems with one bad sensor or wiring so we can see from this picture we have a few waveforms at the top we have a normal waveform and at the bottom or oh, sorry the next one we have a cracked uh, tone ring um or magnet pickup whichever whichever one you have then the next one we have damage and as you can see from the top of the waveform it's very pointy it's not nice and smooth and the last one is a missing tooth we have a big dropout so very quickly very easy by spinning the wheel and scoping it you can see what the problem is and you know you don't necessarily have to replace the sensor because you can see what the tone ring and what everything else is doing by spinning the wheel this is what makes your diagnosis better this is what makes your customer happy and you know you they keep coming back to you because you fix the car first time you haven't just thrown a load of parts at it what we're going to do next is we're going to show you just how a typical ABS sensor works. So here we have a very typical magnetic inductive sensor. Uh, there's more than one on the car, you know, there's crankshaft sensors and all that, but we'll just concentrate on the ABS. As you can see from the picture, there is a tiny little air gap, which is important because the air gap obviously makes sure everything is working properly in the sense of it has to be precise. If there's any rust jacking or anything underneath or anything between it, the sensor can't function properly and you're going to get, you know, weird, weird readings coming from it. The sensor works by having a stator and a permanent magnet inside it, which is also surrounded by an inductive coil. As the wheel rotates, you can see the air gap will actually change between the teeth, which will then in turn cause the magnetic field to expand and contract. The movement of the magnetic field induces current inside the sensor so in other words imagine the sensor as its own little battery and the faster or the slower you go this will obviously change the magnetic current internally in the sensor and this is how we get our waveform and as we've seen from the beginning of the video how it how it changed depending on the speed of the wheel which it then sends a usable signal back to the computer obviously that depending on what sensor you've got to what signal it sends and then the computer can make sense of that and obviously you can continue driving forward if you've got you know um, 
ABS, traction control and stuff like that. All the computers and the systems will talk to each other, the car will be happy and you can continue down the road doing whatever you happen to be doing. So that's a really quick look and a very simple um, explanation of basically what is happening inside that sensor, how it works and how the, the computers actually uh, pick up that signal and then put it to the rest of the car to make sure it's all happy and good sorted the other good thing about scoping is on a lot of cars the abs um only works at a certain speed once you go over a certain speed it tends to on the live data drop out and basically the car won't send it to the to the live data but at least when you scope it you can you can kind of control the speed like what i did there is i had the car in first gear and i was just letting the base of the wheel spin now, you can obviously spin it by hand. You know, you can go faster and slower so your amplitude changes. You can just spin it nice and slowly so you can see if basically everything's working. And that's when it goes back to the actual magnet card that that's essentially what it's doing. It's picking up all them little teeth going around inside the magnets. And if one of them is missing, it could be dropping out at a certain point. Depending on how fast you're going, it, it will pick it up at different speeds and different dropouts and that's the key you can get rush jacking you can get all sorts of problems and which you can kind of see from the scope and then your best thing is your eyes visual inspection you know look at the wires look at the rust see, is there is the rust does it look like the the the, um, the abs sensor is kind of pulling out because there's rust underneath it the tone ring you can physically see the tone ring is it cracked has it moved you know there's, there's loads of stuff you can do your eyes are a really really good test but at least with the scope you can see clearly you can see the waveform you can see if there's any dropouts and then you can take your diagnosis from there and the best thing about an abs sensor is because your car is going to have four of them on the chances of all four of them breaking at the same time is very unlikely so at least you can go to if you don't know the exact signal you need or the exact amplitude or anything like that you can go to the other abs sensor on the other side you can scope that and you can see what is good or bad and with the four channel scope you can actually do that so with the four channel scope you can put two more channels on the far side and then you can compare your waveforms to to your known good and to your you know to your the one that you suspect is bad and at least with that then you can actually see is it an abs problem is it an ABS sensor, wheel sensor problem? Is it a wheel bearing problem? Is it a tone ring problem? You know, you can actually see without basically guessing and then your customer is gonna be a lot happy with you because you're not saying, oh, you need an ABS sensor. You put an ABS sensor, oh yeah, you need a wheel bearing now and you need this. You can tell straight away and it makes life a lot easier. But just bear in mind, a lot of ABS sensors can be a nightmare to take out. So in some cases, especially some BMWs, I've seen them where they're working perfectly, but you can only get them out by damaging them and then drilling them out. It's a nightmare. So you have to obviously bear that in your mind and tell your customer that as well. When I was looking back on the film, it didn't really show up very well on this. Um, my bigger one, which I just cannot find, is a lot better. So what I've done is I've ripped off the back of the paper. There was like backing paper on there, which is no good. This thing can save your life a lot too. You scope it first, you rotate your wheel, you know you've got powers, grounds and everything and you know your sensor is kicking out uh, a signal but it's dropping out at a certain time and you're like, well what's going on? Is that, have I got a faulty ABS sensor? Well obviously this can tell you straight away. Um, obviously it does require a bit of stripping but when you actually put it up to it, now that's so much better. There we go, look. You can see the segments inside the ABS ring and then you know if you've got an ABS problem very very simple bang up your scope channel two channels you don't have to but two channels is just so you can monitor the the actual power put it to a good wheel four channels bang it on your computer you know especially if it's front wheel drive put it in gear have both wheels spinning at the same rpm compare your two waveforms you can clearly see then if you've got an issue with one against the other you know which one your good one is and you know which one your bad one is and then you can make your diagnosis from and again this fella you know if you do drop these or anything or even if the parts guy comes and he kind of chucks them out of his van you don't know if this has got damaged it could even have got damaged when it was being shipped to the parts people so always always check it 
with this and then you know straight away. There'd be nothing worse than putting one of these in, going through all that trouble and then changing an ABS sensor because you think it's an ABS sensor when it was this all along. So very, very easy. You can tell a lot of things from just quickly hooking up a scope to an ABS sensor. You just need to know which ABS sensor is. There's different ABS sensors give you different uh, waves and stuff. You know, there's a, there's a two wire, there's a three wire, and like I explained in the beginning, this is a two wire. So our signal wire is superimposed in our earth, where a three wire sensor, you have a separate um, signal for that, and then you have a power on an earth. So always good, check your powers in your grounds first, scope it, it's easy people. This is what can make your life so much easier. Your diagnosis is quicker. You know, your customer is happy because they're getting the right job the first time. You're not going to be known as a parts changer. Do your diagnosis properly. It really doesn't take long. You know, find out exactly what's going on. And there you go. Sorted. So look, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.